All right, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how we can do tiling textures inside of ZBrush using a special method on your brushes called the wrap mode. Before we get into this, we need to talk about how we can actually get a scene set up this way to where we can actually sculpt on one part of this model and actually have it carry over here to make sure that our, uh, our work that we're doing is actually tiling correctly. Um, so the first thing you'll see is that I've got my document set up in a square format and that's pretty easy to set up. You just go to document here, you can turn off the proportion button and you can set it to something like what I have here, 1024 by 1024. And you can resize and then redraw onto the canvas. So it's pretty easy to set up your document like that so it's going to be in this kind of square format. The other thing, I'm not using perspective on this because I need a very straight on camera view of what it is that uh, I'm sculpting. And if I take this thing and if I drop the resolution down all the way, you can see what the actual shape of this thing was, like this. And we'll be taking a look at uh, another scene that is what this looks like before we actually divide this thing. So I'll go ahead and load that up and take a look at that. Um, before we do, we can hop on over to Maya and let's take a look at what the piece of geometry is that was made for this scene. So if I select this uh, selection set that I have here, I'm just gonna select it, right click over it and say select set members. You can see when we were inside of ZBrush, this is the actual area that we were looking at on our model was right within this part right here. So I've set this uh, piece of geometry up to be um, a little bit bigger than this thing here. So if you take half the distance on this piece here and you shift it over here and along the top and here, this is going to give you the correct layout that you're going to need for ZBrush. So basically what's happening when we turn on that wrap mode, when we draw something here and go off this edge, we've got another version of that stroke that comes on this side and it's got a certain distance to it that produces uh, the tiling function that we need. So really we only need this area that we're going to be sculpting on but for ZBrush functionality you need your piece to be uh, this aspect ratio that you see here. And the reason the geometry is so low out here is because we don't really care what's going on with the sculpture out here we only care about what's going on in this area. So I'll show you uh, this piece of geometry as I was building it. So first I just started off with this flat plane that you see here and uh, if we go to create polygon primitives and go to plane and go to the option box for that uh, I think I could just set up something where the width and the height were set to 100 and then the divisions are set to 10 like that and that would give you that flat plane. And then I just duplicated it and chopped it in half and moved this half over and then I started deleting edges that I didn't need over here so it's pretty easy to just select a group of edges you can right click on here and go to edge or you can hit F10 and select them delete them and if you hit F9 or right click over here to vertice if there's any stray verts left over you would be able to just select them and delete them um, so that's how I kind of finished those things out I also used uh, shift right click and use the multi-cut tool and if I needed to finish out any geometry you can see this pattern that was made turns this into a quad this is a quad because it's got one two three four points same here like this and so I'm trying to uh, take complex geometry and then make it more simple as it goes out just because when this divides we're never going to see this area and we don't really need it we only need it for the functionality of the tiling inside of ZBrush so that's why I gave one little row along the outer edge of this to make sure that there was the same amount of detail on this panel here as what we need in the middle. So that's kind of why this pattern is set up the way that it is. And um, I'm really only concerned about UVs on this piece here and it's pretty simple. UVs are going to be created for you uh, whenever you make that polyplane and it just fits in the zero to one range inside of Maya. Um, if I selected all the different pieces that we got here, you can see it just overlaps each other and everything else like that. But again, I only really care about this because I'm going to be hiding all of this geometry out here after we're done sculpting. And we can just blow it away and get rid of it. So what we're left with is this thing inside of the middle. 
So after I have those pieces set up, just combine them all together. And then I'll show you this here real quick. Um, once you combine them all, you can just go to Mesh, Combine, and that'll combine all your objects together. And then you can select the object and you can hit uh, Control F9 when you're in object mode. And that will convert your selection to vertices. And then at that point, you can go and hold down Shift and right click. And we can say Merge Vertices and use this Merge Vertices option box. And then that will give us a threshold that we can use and just give it a really low number. And any time any kind of vert sits over the top of each other, it'll automatically weld that for you. Turn off this Always Merge for Two Vertices. And then you'll have a one-piece model that uh, has no cracks or seams in it. Then you want to go ahead and take that and export that out as an OBJ. So you can just say File, Export Selection. Make sure your OBJ export type is set here. I always turn groups, or I'm um, sorry, not groups, materials off for that. And if you don't see the OBJ export, you can go to Windows, Setting Preferences, go to the Plugins Manager. And if you take a look here, you should be able to find there should be an OBJ uh, exporter within here somewhere. So I'm not going to dig through it, but here it is right here. I always have that loaded and have it auto load just because I'm going to be using that quite a bit inside of ZBrush. So after you export out that, let's um, hop on over to ZBrush again and take a look at the scene file that was set up uh, originally before any sculpting was done. Okay, here we are back inside of ZBrush and let's talk a little bit about how we get that piece of geometry inside of here and make sure that everything's kind of set up correctly. So um, I've already got this in the scene here. I'm going to zoom out a little bit, turn on the polyframe, and you can see this is the final uh, thing that we want. And uh, I've already got a camera view set up. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how to get that set up. But this is the end goal of what we want here. So I'm going to show you. I'm just going to click on a polymesh uh, 3D uh, object here like this. So if you don't see that, you can always switch off of whatever tool you are in click this uh, big tool icon and you can see there's um, a bunch of different things that you can select here so the polymesh 3d is the default object with inside a zbrush that you know you might want to import models over the top of that thing so I'm gonna hit control N to clear my canvas my cursor is white I'm gonna click and drag out this thing onto the canvas and then I'll hit T which is going into edit mode which puts us into the mode of actually sculpting on something now anytime you have a model selected inside a ZBrush, you can see over here in the subtool section, if we go to import, you're actually going to be telling the program to import your new model over the top of whatever's selected here in the subtool area, which I only wanted this star thing as a uh, placeholder. So go ahead and say import, and then you need to navigate to where you uh, saved out that OBJ file. So go ahead and load up that OBJ file, and when you open it, it should look something like this that you see here. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is the reason why I've got this poly group in here where I can hold on control and shift and click on this and isolate this is because I uh, made a selection set inside of Maya. So if you're inside of Maya, it's pretty easy to uh, set that up. You can just select the faces that you want as a set like this. So I'm selecting the faces and then go to create sets and make a set out of that. And you can see that I've got these new set members in here so I can control right click on here sorry not control just right click on there and say select set members and that'll make that selection type so when you export that OBJ that'll come over to ZBrush for you so that's why I've got this poly group uh, poly group information on there so if you turn on the poly frame you can actually see that and why that's important is because I need to uh, build a camera view that looks at just this piece here so if I bring everything back and hold control and shift and click on the open viewport, if I rotate my canvas and then hold down shift and snap it to here and I have perspective turned off, I can tap F like this and it's going to fill the entire canvas view with whatever we're looking at, right? And so we're going to be sculpting on this thing and we're going to be using the wrap mode but the only thing that we really care about is this here. So to get a camera view for that, we can hold down Control and Shift and just show this part and tap F and it's gonna fill the entire canvas with just that section, which is cool. So we can go under Document and save that camera view. We'll go to Document and go to Zaplink Properties and this is where you can store some camera information. So I just need a top view and I'll just click Top and it'll store that camera view. 
Um, it'll automatically make a bottom view for you. You don't need it. And if you want to get rid of it, you can just say clear to and hit bottom. And then now you got a camera stored. The only problem is when you save a project file, this doesn't save with it. So you're probably going to want to save these camera views. So just go ahead and say save views. Uh, and I am usually storing that with my project data. And you can see that I've given it the name there uh, with this VWS. And then every time you come into ZBrush, you can always go to document and say load views and load up that little file and you'll have your camera view back. Um, so this is the other part of this. So you can see we did everything just to set up that camera, but to sculpt, we need the rest of this object uh, back, right? So we'll hold down Control and Shift and click in the open viewport and bring everything back. And then now we can go back to document, click top, and we've got this camera view. There's another thing that I noticed that uh, was causing some issues for me for the uh, tiling of this geometry. And that has to do with um, ZBrush not unifying the space between here and here or this, this part here and here. So we're trying to set up the brush to tile in a certain way. And ZBrush needs a little bit more information. It's pretty easy to fix. You just go to uh, deformation and there's this unify uh, button here. Just go ahead and click that one time and it should unify this piece of geometry to where it'll start to tile correctly with your brushes. So again, after I do that, I just want to make sure that everything's set up correctly with my camera view still and that doesn't change anything. So I'll go to document and go to top and everything's good for that. Okay, so I'm going to bring everything back. Now we're going to start talking a little bit about dividing the model up to where we've got uh, more subdivision levels within this thing. So we're going to the geometry section and normally you just hit divide and divide the model up and you can see what's going to happen when we do that. So I'm going to hit undo and it's going to start to curl these edges and everything else like that. That's not what we want. So I'm going to hit undo. Uh, the other thing is we can do selective um, division on our model. So if we hold on control and shift and drag a marquee around just these pieces here and hide everything else, you can uh, start to divide this model up. Um, so I could hit Control D and that'll divide it. That's one thing that we can do. The other thing I want to show you is that if we turn off this SMT, the smooth uh, modifier for the subdivisions, we can go ahead and divide and we'll divide again. We'll turn off the polyframe and turn it back on. And you can see with this division mode, it doesn't smooth any of the uh, any of the geometry. It just adds the divisions to it. So that's a different way of uh, you know adding your subdivision levels to this thing. I'm going to hit undo to get back to our base geometry. I'm going to turn that thing off. And let's go ahead and isolate just this part. Control shift, drag a marquee around it. And we're going to divide. And we can do this again. So we'll divide again. We'll do it uh, another time here. Divide. And then after we've got a few divisions on there, you could actually start to divide this thing like this. And now you can see it's dividing the entire model. Again, this geometry looks really nasty out here. But again, it won't really matter because we're not using this for anything for our tiling part other than just to get the brushes to wrap correctly. So I'll divide again and let's take a look at this plane and see if we can um, start to figure out what the poly count is on this. So we want it to be right around um, a million polys and now we're at um, you know 1.5 million. So that should be a pretty good resolution for us uh, to start working with. And now let's just take a look real quick at setting up the wrap mode for our brushes. So. To have this set up, I would highly recommend this. Go to brush, take this icon, click and drag it over to dock that whole part. And we want to go to a curve and then this is your wrap mode. And if you turn it on something like two, I'm going to tap S to make my brush size smaller. We should be able to start drawing on the model like this. And you can see how it's uh, going to give us multiple versions of that brush stroke that you see here like that and what we're trying to get this thing to do with this wrap mode of two if you have zero it's just a regular stroke if you have it set to one it'll uh, continue off this edge and start to repeat on this edge if we have it set to two 
we could start in here like this and have it come across. So I'll turn off that polyframe and really all we are concerned about is this, this section right here like this. So I'll tap F to frame that up. Again, remember we need, um, we need to have this whole thing visible to sculpt on here and but we want that camera view where everything's zoomed in on here so that's why we show everything and go to document and use that camera view that we have and then now if we start to draw on this part of the canvas you can see it's just going to tile uh, across for me as I go across here it starts to move over onto this side it it feels that way but really what's happening we've got two brushes that are uh, painting simultaneously and it looks like I dropped my subdivision level down accidentally when I hit undo so let's go to geometry and take a look at that I do want uh, more divisions on this thing um, let's see here let's go back to that and check uh, where we're at uh, poly wise so that's not, not high enough actually I think I made a mistake whenever I was looking at the numbers there um, so let's see now we're only at uh, six or six hundred thousand we'll divide it one more time and now we're over 2.5 million so uh, the more polys that you have the you know it's gonna be a little bit slower for you whenever you're sculpting on this thing so that's that's kind of the only drawback with this thing uh, with the amount of polys that you have on there so if you can find a good a good level that has kind of the response that you're looking for in your stroke that's a good thing um, also I've noticed I like to turn off uh, the lazy mouse information for this stuff so you just tap L if you see this brush has got this little tiny red tick thing following it uh, from behind and that tells you that lazy mouse is turned on you can tap L for that and turn lazy mouse off um, actually I don't know it looks like maybe it was actually sculpting a little bit better with with that um, so while I'm using these different brushes you have to turn this wrap mode on for every brush that you use so let's say I was using the Damien standard brush and you can see I just switched to that I've got a hot key for it set to 2 but you can go to B D and then go to Damien standard right there and you see the wrap mode is set to zero so every time you switch to a new brush you're going to have to uh, make sure that that wrap mode is turned on um, something else that you could do uh, once this thing is set up you could save a default project for yourself so say file save as and now you've got this set up and anytime you want to start making repeating textures and sculpting you've already got the thing set up and you don't only have to set it up one time so that's something that you could do for yourself. The other thing you could do is go to your uh, layers and make a new layer. And it says we need to be on the highest subdivision level for that. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and delete the highest subdivision level. I think this four subdivision level is pretty good. So I'll go to layers and I'll make a new layer. And I can just give this a name, call it the sculpt. like this and you can see we're in recording mode and so then now I'll start to sculpt on this start to make a pattern and depending on you know what it is your game that you're looking for if you're looking for something that's more stylized or something like that you know you're gonna have to sculpt that information to make this into what you want it to be so you can do organic stuff you know you could try to use masking. Masking is another thing. If I hold on control, uh, let's take a look at our brush settings. So hold on control and you see how it switches here. So then again, you're going to have to put this wrap mode up to two while you hold down control. And now you would be able to actually sculpt holding down control and you would be able to build up a mask using this. So we could color this in. I'll make my brush size larger. So I can make this mask that you see here and then come over to this side and start painting. So it does just take a little bit of getting used to to kind of get used to like drawing across the canvas. 
like this. So I'm not gonna get it too crazy with that. Um, I can hold down Control and Alt, and then sculpt out. Let me hit undo real quick. I'm gonna need my brush size a little bit smaller. Um, accidentally hit X to uh, turn on symmetry. Symmetry. Don't want symmetry on whenever we're doing this this type of work. So I'm just trying to isolate that a little bit. And I wanted to show you what we could do with this. Once you're done with the mask, you can inverse it, hit Control I, and we'll just move our canvas. So I'm going to rotate this thing out like this. And again, what we see out here is going to look nasty. It's not a big deal. It's just because we have less geometry out there. We don't need that much geometry for this tiling part. And then I'll put it on Move and just click this face here, and it should give me this orientation for my uh, transpose tool. If I want to be really careful about it, I could just click and drag that out, holding the shift to make sure it's going straight up and down. And then I could use this to kind of pull this thing up and get different uh, elevation for these different parts that you see here. Now hold on control and just drag in the open area over here to get rid of the mask. And then we can go back to our camera view like this. And you can see if I was uh, being better about what I was uh, painting with on there, then uh, you know this will look a little bit better and we can clean that up. So again, if I hold down shift to do smoothing, we have to take that wrap mode and put it up to two. And you can see now I can smooth across that and I'm smoothing this area here and over here at the same time as it goes across the, the canvas like that. And another brush that would be kind of cool to use is if you use the trim dynamic. So I've got that set up on a high key of zero, but you can go B, T, and then find trim dynamic over here. Again, we're gonna have to take that wrap mode and uh, fix that up a little bit like this. Okay. And then you can see you can get some really cool, uh, nice edges like this on these different uh, uh, pieces that you're making. I can just sculpt across right in here and you can see that it's gonna go right across my canvas for me just like what we're hoping for and then maybe after you're done with that then maybe it's just a matter of uh, using the Damien standard brush to go back and through here and then fix up some of these edges and build some better cracks and things like that. Uh, the other thing um, I needed to make sure I was telling you, um, this is set to the actual size of the canvas and to see the whole tile thing because I'm doing 1024 it doesn't fit on my screen. I just use the zoom thing to zoom out a little bit. It makes the quality of the image look a little worse when you're working but you can always check it by going back to actual like this or you could be working with AA half um, but the AA half does make it um, quite a bit smaller so it's up to you if you want to use that or not again you can just zoom this thing to where it kind of you can see the top and the bottom um, I usually like to zoom it past you see these uh, white bars here um, I like to have it inside of that so when I sculpt on the top of this it just goes and continues on right from the bottom like that yeah so you can see that that's a little bit better setup, but again, it just kind of tears up this image a little bit, but it's just a display thing, so you can always zoom back in. And really, the only time that you need to really be concerned about stuff is whenever you're painting across here to go to here. So if you build some things for yourself to build your pattern up pretty quickly uh, and you're careful about stuff, you can spend most of your time just inside of here so you can go to the actual size and then at that point it's just a matter of kind of watching and being careful not to paint across these edges and when you do then uh, just get yourself set up to where you can sculpt a little bit easier like that so um, if I zoom out again this is gonna look like look really bad um, we can go back to that camera view um, this also works with uh, if you have like a standard brush and you do a drag rectangle and you've got an alpha and uh, you got some different shapes on there like that this uh, method still works with the wrap mode with this stuff here as well so that's uh, really powerful stuff and um, so you can you can find there's a lot of people that have different brush sets out there that you could that they've made custom brushes and if you're doing uh, more 
natural kind of looking things, then uh, you know you can find those brushes and then pull this out. So a combination of what you're sculpting and some of these stamps and stuff like that can be a pretty a pretty powerful workflow to make for yourself for uh, building up these textures that you see here. Um, I'm going to load up the uh, scene that I've already uh, worked on and we'll take a look at just rendering some stuff out real quick. All right, here we are back inside of ZBrush and this is the earlier project that um, I was working on. So this is after, you know, maybe about an hour's worth of sculpting on this thing um, and building some elevation changes on these rocks that you see here. Let me go ahead and I'll rotate the canvas a little bit so you can kind of see that we've got some rocks that are sticking up a little bit higher than others uh, using the Damien Standard trim dynamic to get these edges here and then using some different stamps uh, that I found uh, to build some of the different texture on the rocks. So I'll go back to this top view that you see here and let's go ahead and zoom out just a little bit like this uh, so we can see everything. And then let's talk about rendering this thing now. So I'm gonna open up this side of the uh, interface right here. We've got materials selected. I'm gonna go to the rendering section, click and drag that over here, and just close up the material stuff right now. So um, we've got our different uh, render properties. I've turned on shadows is on by default, and I turned on this ambient occlusion as well. And you can see for the shadows, Here's some of the settings for this. Uh, there's a uh, 12 rays for this uh, resolution of 4096. This V depth was set to negative two and that just kind of builds up a little bit more contrast on your uh, shadows so they don't look so muddy. Uh, then blurred this just a little bit. And here's what we have for AO. I think I set this to 180, the default was 360. Uh, that's for the spread of how far the AO travels. These rays, bump that up to 64. The resolution is at 2048. And I turned on the blur on this to one like this. I also turned up the global strength on this. Um, I think it was at 0.7 or something like that. So it just makes the uh, AO a little bit stronger. So after that's set up, you can go ahead and hit this best possible renderer button or you can hit shift R and it'll go through and uh, render this thing real quick. Um, actually, I'm also using the uh, matte cap gray material and you can see my colors set all the way up to white for this. So after it's done rendering, we can go ahead and take a look at the render passes, which is cool. It's going to break it out into this shaded. It's going to give you a depth. Uh, it's going to give you the shadow information and it's also going to give you uh, AO like what you see here. Uh, for things and there's a mask but there it's just a square and everything's being filled up so it's easy to get these things outside of ZBrush you just go ahead and click on them and I'm gonna navigate to an area where I made myself a folder called renders and now I'm just gonna click on that hit save click on the depth right there and save that go to shadows and save that and save out the AO like that and then hop on over to Photoshop and let's just go ahead and open up those different maps that you see. Uh, let me navigate to that real quick and go to the tools and resources. Here's my renders. I'm just going to select this, hold down shift, select everything and hit open. And I'll open all these uh, files up inside of Photoshop. So the thing I want to make sure is that there is um, no seams on this and that it actually is tiling correctly for us. And so if I just go to filter other and then go to offset like this, uh, our document is a 1024 by 1024. So we can just type in 512 by 512 like this and make sure it's tiling correctly and I don't see any seams like this. Let me uh, check this real quick. Hold on Alt and you can click on here and you can see, yeah, it is a 1024 by 1024 pixel image. So there's our shadow. So I could um, double click on this and start uh, giving, giving this a name. Let me try this real quick. I wanna make sure that this mode for this thing is actually set to grayscale. And then I'm gonna change that to RGB color. And now I'm gonna double click on it. Um, it didn't like the format that it was in before. So let's just call this uh, shadow like this. And so we got our shadow. 
And then this is the flat gray render that we have. Let's check the mode on that real quick, and it's RGB color. So I can double click on that and just call this uh, render like that. And I can hold down V or tap V, hold down shift and drag that across like that. And so I just uh, snap that into that other document and then I can close this one. Um, let's just go ahead and I'll save it real quick just because I changed the name. Here's our depth information. And I'm going to change that to it's 16 bits. So it's just going to change it to 8 bit. And I'm going to make it uh, RGB color like this. I'll double click on it and just call this depth like that. And hold down, tap V, hold down shift and drag it over. And it should snap into place for us. I'll close that one out. Just save it. And this is our AO. And let's check the mode on this. Let's make that grayscale. And then make it color. And then double click on it and call it. AO like that. And hold on V, tap tap V, hold, hold it down, hold down shift, drag it across. And then so uh, now we have all these set up. And now I can just save this as one Photoshop document. Uh, I'll call this renders like all, something like that, just for now. And again, I'm going to uh, check this for each one of these things, just just to make sure. I'm going to go to Filter, Other, and then go to Offset, and do the 512 by 512, and just check and make sure that, like, if there's a seam, it would show up right in the middle here. You can hit OK for that, and then if you just go to Filter, Offset, we could just run that thing again, and it puts it back into place because we just shifted over 512 by 512. And then we shift it over 512 by 512 again, and it returns back to its uh, original spot. So now we go to the depth, we go to filter, offset, and here we can see we've got some seams going on on this one. So we're going to have to do a little bit of work uh, to fix this thing up. So we could zoom in really close to this, like this, and grab this little row of uh, pixels. So I'll just click and drag up. It's kind of slow because we're so far zoomed in like this. We're almost to the top. So if I put it on V for the move tool, I can hold down Alt and click the right arrow key and it's gonna take those pixels and shift them over like that. So again, I got that marquee uh, that we made. Hold down Alt and that's going to make a copy and then you can click the arrow key left or right. We're in our case we're going right. So I'll deselect Control D and I'm hitting uh, Control minus to zoom out. And then now let's uh, zoom in here. Something else that we can do, we can tap M for our marquee tool and we can do a fixed size. So we we know our width of our document is 1024, like that. And height, we could make it um, three pixels. And now we can just click and drag a line here, but it's going to be really tough to see. So I'm going to zoom in. So I'm holding spacebar and adding the control modifier, and then just clicking and dragging in, and I can do that. And once we've made that selection, we can just, when we're on this marquee tool, go in the middle of this thing and just click and drag it up like that and if you want to move it one pixel you can just tap the up arrow key and again we want to copy those so I'm going to put it on uh, the move tool so you tap V and hold down alt and click up and then I'll make copies of those pixels like that and we're gonna zoom back out let's zoom in here um, and now let's uh, put this thing back onto our filter offset and we should be back into that original position that we have. So now you can see that we've got uh, this thing. If we turn it on and off, we can see um, this thing lining up and we've fixed any kind of seaming issue. So we'll do this with the render one too. We'll go to filter offset and we've got a very similar problem. So I'll tap M for the marquee tool. Click this here. Tap V, put on Alt, click up. Okay, Control Zero, 
control D to deselect and put it on that marquee tool again. And then this time I can just swap these values with this arrow thing. So this is a width of three and then now I got a height of uh, 1024. So we'll zoom in and we're good here. Okay, and hit control zero, control D to deselect and we should have fixed that so we go filter offset and now we've got our thing back like this and you can see we're just checking the orientation of that so our render is good now and let's check our shadow let's go filter offset and maybe there were some problems with this but it's so bright that you, you can't even really tell so let's go filter offset like this and so then now we got a document, we'll just save it. We've got all these different channels. We know that they tile correctly and you can start to do different things with uh, these things. Like in a game engine, the depth thing, you can actually displace the geometry. So whatever is white will stick up higher and these things will actually be a little bit lower and these cracks will recess in. So that's something that you could do. Um, you could use this to also help you like build up color and using a mask and things like that. Uh, the AO, um, let's say let's say we did this we just made a solid color and who knows maybe you want your rocks to be more of this kind of tan kind of color um, we could have this at the base we could turn on our shadows and we could use that as a uh, multiply and you can see we can multiply that over that way uh, we could change the opacity of this thing and drop it down that's something that we could do. The other thing that we could do is go here and make a uh, hue saturation and adjustment layer and we'll tie it just to the shadow layer. So we'll hold down alt right with this line here and then tie that hue saturation only to this image. And it's already been set to multiply. So now we can start to uh, play with some color and maybe do a colorize. And what if we wanted our shadows to be like a bluish kind of color, you could do that. Uh, if you change the lightness and put them up like that, you could do that depending on how saturated you want it to be. You know, you can play around with that and get this right in the right area where you want it to be. And again, we could kind of tone that back a little bit. And then for the render, we could put that on something like um, overlay if you wanted. And you could even drop that back a bit if you want. It's, it's completely and totally up up to you what you do with this right um, and again the depth could be like you could use that as a multiply or whatever and you see how you're getting some color differences on that thing and we'll just play with the opacity on that and again with the AO we could set that to multiply and then we could you know dial that back if you wanted something like that and then now you got something to play around with where you can make a whole new um, layer and maybe set that to uh, like color dodge or even like color if you wanted to work with color and build different colored stones things like that like if you wanted to push more of a red or something and put it on a brush and let's see what kind of brush that we've got here uh, I've got a more of a solid kind of color nib that we've got here and that's not going to work for us for this kind of red I want something more like this and you can paint these things in for the rock I'm not going to get too uh, specific with this but you can see you would have to spend a little bit of time and you can actually paint these things up you could paint these in uh, inside a ZBrush too you could use uh, poly painting with inside a ZBrush to do this work if you wanted but with this method, you could um, do everything inside of Photoshop. The one thing that I actually like is if I make this selection and if I make a new solid color and I make it like red or something like that, let's get rid of this paint that I made. Um, I could change that blending mode back to color so we have maybe what we had before. Let's do make sure it's on color. And now you have something that's interactive and you can sit there and change the colors on this thing. So I could make it any color I wanted. So say your art director comes by and he, he or she says, let's make this thing, this stone, more of a bluish kind of color or something like that. You would have the ability to change some of that stuff on the fly, right? And then it's just building that shape up into a mask. Of, so if I paint um, 
end of the mask with a brush and I paint black, it'll subtract away from it. And if I tap X and paint white into that mask, then I'm painting that color in that particular area that you see here. And I've got a hard edge brush on here right now, but there's no reason why you can't uh, use something that's like an airbrush like this. So you can even paint really nice kind of more like gradients and stuff like that on this thing. And so then you could actually add, you know, different layers on here that you're using for uh, for dirt and everything else. So you can kind of really go to go to town on this stuff and uh, you're not locked into any kind of choices that you have maybe made for color on certain things. And I got to make sure I'm painting into that mask or it kind of barks at you a little bit like this. And um, the last thing I want to make sure you guys know about is we've got all these different um, maps that we've built out that we can use. There's a uh, one last map type that I want to show you and we're gonna have to change our shader type to this normal uh, MRGB material like this and we'll do a best possible render like that and you can go ahead and kick this thing out kick out the shaded this time I'll call it uh, norm like that hit save and then we'll go back on over to Photoshop I'll open it control O open that up and let's just double click on that and call this norm like that and we'll do our filter offset on it and we need to uh, fix fix our seams again which is not a big deal like that I'll go to my marquee tool we'll flip these like that and go back to control zero and then we'll do our filter offset again and we fixed any kind of seaming issues and then I'll just hold down, I'll tap V, hold down shift, click and drag over into our document. And there's our normal map. I'll just save that real quick. And I'll save this document out as well. So now uh, with that setup, you're able to sculpt this tiling texture and you've got a lot of options for the maps that are kicked out for this thing so now you would be able to pull this into a uh, you know a game engine and uh, put this on there and you'd be able to repeat these textures over you'd have stuff to start building your color maps up with you know things that you would be able to use for if you've got a more complex shader and you wanted to put AO in there uh, things if you wanted to build yourself a specular map you know you can select everything you've done for the color control shift C and then V to paste that and then we can go to image mode adjustments desaturate that and then control L will bring up our levels and we can start uh, playing around with some of the different levels and things like that and you would be able to play around with uh, you know building yourself uh, you know a specularity map um, depending on if you're using PBR this is definitely gonna look different but this is like an, more of an old-school specular map wherever it's white it's gonna be more specular and wherever it's dark like these cracks specularity won't go in those cracks so you have a lot of different options uh, at your disposal it's it takes a little bit of time to get this uh, scene set up the way that it is but once you have that scene set up you can start to use it for all kinds of different tiling textures that you're going to need uh, for whatever you're making for your game.